How's it going, guys? Hope you're having an amazing week. Um, what I'd like to do today is I've got um, I got a bunch of material that I want to cover and talk about, but I also want to make sure that we do the best job we've done yet with um, questions and comments. And so we've talked about so many things. This is week number five. We talked about so many things in the uh, the teen webinar series, young adult series, whatever you want to call it is fine. Uh, we've talked about so many varying things. I want to make sure that if you've got questions or if you have an aha moment where you're like, ah, this totally made sense. Like if I said something and then maybe said it another way or I said it and you went, oh, like that light bulb moment, um, I'd love to hear some of them. And the reason those are important is it tells me is what I want you to hear being heard or do I need to say it a different way, uh, which is also a, a smart play like with your parents. Again, um, <laughs> here's how you play your parents, right? You let them know what you're hearing. Like um, you sit down with mom or dad or, or whoever's helping you or, or, or uh, taking care of you and you say, hey, you said blank the other day and what I heard was blank or what that meant to me was blank. Give them some feedback so that they hear what you're hearing too. Um, and what it is, it's communication, right? Like almost every, almost every challenge I have in my professional world, almost every challenge I have in my business, um, almost every challenge I have in my personal world um, looks just like yours. It's a misunderstanding or it's a, um, an idea of you thought it was one way, but somebody else thought it was another. And what I want you to think of is this, um, and it'll make sense and some of it will make sense later. Uh, but if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. You judge yourself based on your intentions. You judge others based on their actions. Let me say it again. You judge yourself based on your intentions. You judge others based on their actions. So let me give you an example. Um, has there ever been a time at school that you said something to a friend and what you said, um, they were offended by it or they took it the wrong way and you're like, whoa, 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 I didn't mean it like that. I meant it like this. And you're like, hey, how come you're being so difficult on me? Don't, you know, don't blow up, don't get angry. Like I didn't mean it like that. I, my intention, my meaning was blank. And has there ever been a time that somebody said something to you that you took uh, the wrong way? Well, you got upset and you judged them based on the action, but you judge yourself based on the intention. The intention is here's what I actually meant. Um, and that's a universal truth. That's a universal law that you're gonna work with your entire life. And when you talk with people or you work with people or you're leading a giant organization someday or you're leading an amazing business or you've built out this awesome entrepreneurial world for yourself and for others to live within. Uh, by the way, if you want to build, uh, if you want to build something, help others build what they want. That's the easiest way for you to get where you want to go. Anyway, back to my point. Um, you're always going to struggle with and have to deal with this issue of your intentions, others actions. And so what I really want you to do is I'm really going to push you to begin to see the world through other people's eyes. And there's, uh, there's an exercise that's called the chair exercise. And the chair exercise, imagine, so in the business world, here's how we might do it. Let's say that you have somebody from the sales department and somebody from the administrative or operations department. And let's say that the sales department and the administration department don't see things the same way. The salespeople, go, 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 sell, let's go. The administration department is, hang on a second, you told all these people something that really can't happen, you overpromised. we can't deliver that, you told them two weeks and it takes three weeks, what are you doing? Um, and so they, they, they tend to argue or fight with each other. So the chair, the chair exercise, if we were to do it in person, if I were to be coaching you through it, is I would say to the salesperson, um, I want you to look at the chair. Let's say that they're fighting in a room, right? Like arguing in a conference room. I would have the salesperson go and sit in the chair of the administrator. And I'd have the administrator go sit in the chair of the salesperson. And I would say the best you can to the salesperson. Now you're in the administrator's seat. Tell me what you're going through. Tell me what your thoughts are. Tell me how that's difficult. And all it is, is just an example of getting you to see things through the lens that somebody else looks through. Think about, um, think about a pair of sunglasses. Has there ever been a time that you've put on some sunglasses and they're tinted blue, like they have a blue tint and everything you see is tinted blue because the glasses you look through are blue. You take them off like you're at the pool all day or whatever, right? You take them off and everything else looks different. Well, that's how life looks. 
And whatever your belief lens is, is how you see the world. And some of you, your belief lens says you can do anything. Others, your belief lens says, that's not me. Your belief lens uh, might say, I don't have the money. Or your belief lens might say, um, um, I don't know how to do that. Or your belief lens might say, I'm not talented enough, or I'm not smart enough, or I'm not good looking enough, or I'm not popular enough, or my family status, we don't have enough money. Like whatever it is, your belief lens says, or I'm not athletic enough. Remember your belief lens is just how you happen to see the world. The great thing is just like a pair of sunglasses, you can choose to change that. Now saying it and doing it are two different things, but I want you to think about the, the world of a belief lens through how your parents see the world. And sometimes they're tough on you. Sometimes they're hard on you. Sometimes they push. Um, and again, like I said last week and the week before, I promise you that they're doing their best. One of the things that I've been taught that I'd love for you to write down would be this. Everybody's doing the best they can. Let me say it again. Everybody's doing the best they can at any moment. Everyone's doing the best they can at any moment. Let me, let me prove my point. Um, has there ever been a day that you have totally messed up? Has there ever been a day that you were just rude to your friends or your teacher or rude to a coach or rude to your parents or rude to your boss? And you were just like, it wasn't the best of you. Like you were almost embarrassed by it. Well, that day you didn't wake up and think, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be uh, difficult to my parents. I'm going to talk back and I'm just going to be tough about everything. I'm just going to be a, a, a real jerk all day long. You didn't wake up thinking that. You might have been that. I've been that. But you didn't wake up thinking, I'm going to go do this. Nobody wakes up and says, I'm going to be at my worst today. Nobody does that. We all do the best we can at any moment. And this is where grace comes in. This is where having um, a level of grace to see other people through and think, okay, I know that you're doing the best you can. Ever had your mom or your dad or an older sibling or a grandfather or a grandmother or some type of you know, um, authority figure in your life really push on something and you're like, hey, you don't even know what you're talking about. Like, get off me. Like, that's not even what my issue is right now. But they're pushing and pushing and pushing because they're doing the best they can. This is where I want you to have grace and be able to say, it's okay. Is this gonna be your reaction or your response? Your reaction could be, wow, and you can totally blow up. So think about, here's a good example of reaction and response. Um, if you're gonna build a company, or if you're gonna be an entrepreneur, or you're gonna be, um, you're, gonna, you're gonna impact the world somehow big, you're gonna struggle with this, just like I struggle with this. Is this my reaction or my response? Here's an easy way to, to, uh, to give it to you. You're driving down the road, like you're in your car, you're driving down the road and someone totally cuts you off. Like they just, they fly in front of you, they cut you off and you're like, whoa, like it almost causes an accident. Your reaction might be to yell at them or to flip them off or like your reaction, you know, maybe would be to cut them off, right? Or, or ride their tail real hard or whatever. But instead, you think to yourself, you know what? None of those things make anything better. None of those things bring positive to anything. All of those things keep me in a negative space. And so your reaction is to be upset. But your response is, it's okay. The response is, there they go. The response is, we didn't get in an accident. It's okay. I don't have anything to prove. It's like um, when somebody says something rude to you at school or uh, at church or at uh, an event, someone's rude or, or pushes you or does something they shouldn't. Your reaction might be to push back or your reaction might be to be upset, but your response doesn't have to be. Do you ever get a text message and have you ever responded to a text message or an email and it was almost because you got worked up or you were angry or upset or it just really got you, right? And you typed a response and you hit send. And the second you hit send, you were like, oh, I shouldn't have sent that. I overreacted or I'm making a bigger issue out of this. That's a good example of reaction and response. Now, let me give you an easy model for this. When you're upset about something, I want you to write. Writing is good. If you don't want to write, then you could talk. You don't have to write. You could just talk. Though, whatever the feelings are on the inside, it is proven they need to move to the outside but they don't have to move to the outside in front of other people. 
maybe you really struggle with mom and dad right now. Like maybe, maybe there's just this, this challenge or maybe there will be, and maybe you want to write things down or say things that doesn't mean that your parents have to hear it. It might be very soothing. It might be very therapeutic. It might help you deal with the emotion around it because it does for me. I'm 39 years old and I still do this. And I'll write, here's how this made me feel. Or I'll say, you know what? That really makes me feel blah, blah, blah. And, and, I, don't, and I don't even need the person to hear it. It's just me saying it that helps me to handle the, um, the emotion of it and the feelings around it. One of the challenges I've found about building businesses and building organizations and working with people is that quite often my feelings get in the way. Quite often my emotions get in the way. And so I'm sure if they do for me, they're going to for you as well. All right. So one of the things I wanted to cover today and make sure that we covered was the idea around gratitude. You see, gratitude is an energy. And last week I talked about two magnets, right? And if you get one magnet uh, faced the right way, it pulls another magnet to it. And I gave you a story and I won't go back and tell it again, but if you didn't listen to, to week three and week four, um, I talked about this in, in depth in one of those weeks to so go back and listen to it. Um, well, gratitude is a magnet as well. And the more that you're grateful for things, the more things are going to happen for you to be grateful about. And let me give you an example. Um, I want you to tell your parents and I want you to tell the people that take care of you. And I want you to tell your boss if you have a job. And I want you to tell um, your coaches and your nannies and your uh, siblings um, how grateful you are for something that they do or did or, I mean, your parents. Like, you should go to your parents and just say, you know what? I'm really grateful. Thank you for dinner. You know, there were a lot of days uh, when I was growing up that I didn't have dinner. There were a lot of days growing up that I didn't have food. There were a lot of days growing up that uh, from when I was 11 uh, yeah, 11 years old and on, um, I bought the majority of my own groceries. And like at that, at that time in my life, my mom had a, re well, my mom, like our house had a refrigerator and there were, um, there were specific shelves in that refrigerator for uh, my food, for kid food. Imagine opening the refrigerator and there was a shelf and that shelf had food for you, but you couldn't touch the other food in the refrigerator. And the food for you was cheap and not very good, but the food in the rest of the fridge was for your parents. And it was better food or higher quality food. Imagine going to the pantry and you have like this shelf and this is the food you can have, but you better not touch this. These chips that your mom likes or these chips that your dad likes, you better not touch them. Can't have those. Imagine living a life like that. Um, I lived a life like that. And maybe some of you listening are living or have lived a life like that too. So if you haven't, I really want you to go to your parents and just show gratitude and say, you know what? I'm grateful. Thank you for, thank you for food. Thank you that we have two TVs. Thank you that we have uh, these games to play, like whatever it is, just be grateful. And here's what happens in life. The more gratitude that you share, the more that you're just grateful for things, the more the world is an energy issue. The more the world is going to give you things to be grateful for. There's an old saying that good things happen to grateful people. And I don't know if that's true or not, but I know it plays to be true. So here's what I know. I, I know that when you're grateful, you look for things to be happy about. Has there ever been a time in your life that you're having a bad day, or you're in a bad mood, or you're just in a funk or a little depressed or whatever? By the way, when those things happen, you're okay. You're fine. You're not wrong. You're not bad. You're not, uh, you're not stupid. None of those things. None of those things. You're not overreacting. None of those things. Your feelings are perfect. Your feelings are perfect. If you feel a certain way, that's a perfect feeling. The challenge is, do you stay there? Do you follow me on this? When you feel like the world is being unfair to you, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. When you feel like everyone's out to get you, nothing wrong with that. That's okay. The issue is how long do you choose to stay there? Does that make sense? The issue is, I feel like everyone's out to get me. I feel like, you know, it's like a, um, everyone's after me. And we, we call it like victim behavior, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Every human being has those feelings. The question becomes, how long do you stay there? Is that going to be a one minute feeling, a two minute feeling, or an all day feeling? Now, the problem is that a one minute or a two minute feeling probably won't ruin your day. But if you allow it to go all day long, it'll ruin your week. Fair? Think about the person that's always having a bad day. You've probably got a friend who's always having a bad day. You probably know someone who's always upset about something, someone who's always having a tough time. Does anybody want to hang out with that person? 
Probably not. People like to hang out with people that are enjoying their life. And one of the things I want you to do is to enjoy your life. Now, during COVID right now, there's a lot of things that have changed. There's a lot of things that we can do, a lot of things that we can't do. And this is a period of time where everything looks different. And this period of time will change again. And we'll go back to some of the old ways. But there'll be lots of the new ways. There's, there's, there's a reality that nothing will ever look exactly the same. And that's okay. Because in life, remains the same. You're going to constantly change. You're going to consistently change. The things that you like will change. The things that you uh, think are important to you will change. And that's perfect. You're wired just right. You're perfect the way that you think. The question is, do you want to think this way? Does that make sense? You get to choose that. All right. So uh, back to gratitude and then let's, um, let's cover if you have any questions, type them into the chat box or ahas that you have or something that I say that you go, you know what, Cody, that really makes a lot of sense to me. Give me some feedback on it. Tell me because that will help me to help you. All right. So gratitude. Um, one of the things that will help you to be grateful is this. Um, I want you to write down five things every day that you're thankful for. Just write down five things every day. And my goal for you would be for the next week, every day you write down five things you're grateful for, but you can't write down the same things again and again and again. So if you're listening right now, um, Lacey, can we get it to where I can see the, uh, the comments over here at all? Can we change it? Um, here's what I'd like you to do. If you're willing to write down five things you're grateful for every day for the next week, I want you to write down here in the chat box, yes, I'm in, I'll do it, something like that. And so if you'll just give me some feedback, just tell me, I'm in Cody, I'll write down five things every day I'm grateful for. It could be a piece of paper, it could be a notepad, it could be a yellow sticky note, doesn't matter to me. I just wanna know that, um, that you're gonna take action. So tell me, say I'm in or I'll do it. Um, so I got, got a handful in, I'm in Cody, thank you so much. Yes, I'll do that, thank you, I'm all in, awesome. So keep, keep writing them. What I want you to do is I want you to write down five things. So today's Friday, write down five things you're grateful for today that you're thankful for. And then tomorrow, Saturday, write down five things, but they can't be the same, they gotta be different. Here's where, here's where the push comes. Like let's say today that you say, I'm grateful for my mom. That's awesome, you should be grateful for your mom. Um, I didn't have the world's greatest mom. And I'm grateful for my mom because she, she helped shape who I am today. And even though I had lots of challenges with my parents, they were always doing the best they could. My parents never woke up and said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this that's going to damage my son. No, nah, they didn't do that. They were doing the best they could. It just had an impact, right? So uh, keep writing them. If you're in, keep writing them. I'm looking for everyone to be in on this. I want you to take action. You see, when you, when you, when you publicly say, I'm going to do something, it increases the likelihood that you'll actually do it. When you publicly take ownership of something, it increases the opportunity of you actually doing it. So tomorrow, Saturday, if you write, I'm grateful for mom today, you can't write, I'm grateful for mom tomorrow. It doesn't mean that you can't be grateful. It just means I want you to look for five new things. And here's what's going to happen. Today will be pretty easy. And tomorrow, your five will be pretty easy. But by Sunday or Monday, you might sit down and go, huh, what am I grateful for? Like, you may have to search. You may have to look and go, what am I grateful for? I can't write the things I've already written. So my goal would be for the next week, that seven days at five things a day, that's 35 things, but it's 35 different things. And what happens is this, when you're looking for things to be grateful for, the world will give you things to be grateful for. All right, so somebody said, uh, what if you feel like life is unfair because of Corona and not being able to do certain things? That's a perfect feeling. And you're perfectly thinking correctly to feel that way. The issue becomes, does it move you forward or move you backwards? Now, is it fair or unfair? It's a really good question. Um, I'll give you my advice around this. I don't spend very much time on fairness. Um, unless it's fairness that I control. So let me give you an example. When I was a kid, um, my brother, two years older, our deal, like let's say we were gonna split a candy bar. Um, one of us split the candy bar and one of us chose which one they wanted. So imagine you got this candy bar and you split it. If I split it and one piece is bigger than the other, which one do you think I'm gonna to hand to my brother? The small one. That's what I would do. I'd split it and go, well, my side's bigger, here you go. And so to keep things fair, if I split the candy bar, my brother got to choose which side to take. 
So what that did was that forced me, if I was gonna split the candy bar, I would split it very even, right? I wouldn't be like, oh, here's yours. Like I would split it very even because I knew he'd take the bigger of the two. So if I have control over it, like if I get to choose um, what I do and that creates fairness, then I'll think about fairness. But the second it's somebody else, I can't control it. And one of the greatest things I've learned in my life is to put very little effort or thought into things that you can't control. So here's where I'm at. Um, I would love to go to a restaurant today, and I can't. I would love to go to the gym today, and I can't. I would love to take my, my little girls, they're eight and 10, I'd love to take them to the pool. Uh, we have like a pool in our neighborhood, um, and I can't, because all those things are closed. And a portion of it would be, that's not fair. Um, but you know what? I want you to take it and flip it. And this is where gratitude comes in. Um, and even when I say it, like, I would like to go to the restaurant, but I can't, it's not open. I'd like to go to the pool, but I can't, not open. I'd like to go to uh, the gym or spin class, but I can't, because it's not open. And if I go down that train of thought, then I have all kinds of feelings that I can't control. And so what I do is I'll stop and I'll almost move. And sometimes I'll actually physically move and I'll start writing things that I'm grateful for. And I'll say, you know what? I'm grateful that um, I slept in a house last night. There were times as a kid, I didn't sleep in a house. There were times as a kid that we didn't have a house to sleep in. And I'll say, well, I'm grateful that I slept in a house last night. As much as I'd love to take the girls to a pool today, um, I am grateful that we have a hot tub here at our house. We have a hot tub that we can go swim in and play in. Um, can't swim very far, <laughs> but we can swim around and splash around in it. And so my point is, as soon as you begin to think of things that you're grateful for, it changes your perception of what's fair. To think that it's unfair isn't wrong. To think that it's unfair is right. Your feeling around it is right. The challenge is it doesn't help you. And if you want to create something amazing in your life and you want to live a big life, if you want to earn a lot of money someday, if you want to make a lot of impact someday, then you're going to have to get really good at feeling the feeling and then choosing a new one. Does that make sense? And you might have to, the old saying, fake it till you make it, this is where this shows up. I get into stinking thinking or negative thoughts that I can't control. Well, if I think about something negative that I can't control, all I'm doing is, um, I'm simply torturing myself. Like I'm terrorizing my own mind with something that I can't control. What I can control is what am I grateful for? What I can control is what am I doing? So instead of being stuck at home, I want you to write this down. So whoever asked that question um, or not being able to do certain things, here's what you can do. So I'll take it this way. So one person says, man, it's such a bummer that I'm stuck at home. I would have them write or say, I'm grateful that I'm safe at home. I'm grateful I'm safe at home. Instead of not being able to go to the grocery store or not being able to go, well, you can go to the grocery store. Instead of not being able to go to school um, or not being able to go to the gym or not being able to go to the event, um, I would say, I'm grateful that I'm safe. I'm grateful that I'm healthy. I'm grateful that I have something that I can do. I'm grateful that I have a book to read or I'm grateful that I have an internet connection, right? Like you think about the things that you and I could do with the internet, we can create anything we want. I'm grateful for those things. So what I'd want you to do is focus on the positive. That doesn't mean the negative doesn't exist. So it really bothers me when like a motivational speaker will say things like, those negative feelings don't, aren't, aren't real. Yeah, they are. I feel them. So yes, they are very real. The question is how long do I want to keep them? I hope that makes sense. All right, so that's where, that's where gratitude comes in. The more grateful you are, it's almost like pulling. It's like pulling. Uh, think about like a ship in a river and, you're, and the ship is heading down the river and the river's negativity, but you don't wanna be negative and you want the ship to go the other direction. Well, getting a ship to turn around in a river isn't very easy. Doesn't mean that you can't do it. It just means that when you feel opposition to it, understand why. All right, um, if you wanna create something, I'm a handful of you are listening to these videos because you wanna create something, you wanna be an entrepreneur, you wanna start a business, you wanna make money, you wanna sell something, whatever it is. Um, here's, here's a model for you. So I'm gonna give it to you and then you gotta write them down. All right, so the first model you need is um, an organization model. So I want you to write this down, organization model. Number two is a budget model, money model. You call it money if you want. So organization, money, 
That's two models. The third model is a lead generation model. You can call it a customer model if you want. Um, I call it lead generation. You can call it what you want. Um, the fourth model is a production model. You can call it a making model if you want or a creation model if you want. Now, it doesn't really matter which one you start with and it doesn't really matter which one you end with. But what I do know is this, let's say that you wanna create something and you wanna be an entrepreneur and I've challenged each and every one of you to do something. Uh, maybe it's um, creating a YouTube site or maybe a channel or maybe it's doing something on Instagram that might create money. And I gave you some really good tools and tactics on week three and week four to do this. Uh, but let me give you one today that we haven't talked about yet. Let's say that you wanted to um, sell t-shirts and you're going to have t-shirts printed and you're going to sell them. Well, there's lots of ways to do this. Uh, so the organization model is, and here's where you're going to write your notes. The organization model is who, who's going to do what? Who's in charge of what? Who's in charge of ordering something? Who's in charge of posting it online? Who's in charge of, of making it happen? And it's okay if it's you. It's okay if your name shows up repeatedly. Though based on how old you are, you might need some help from someone. You might need your mom or your dad. You might need a credit card. If you're 14, you probably don't have a credit card. And so part of the organization model is who's gonna help me with this or who's gonna be in charge of that? Now, let me go to the, uh, the budget model. So this is where you talk about money. Now the money model is this, let's say that you wanna sell t-shirts. The money model is okay, how much will the shirt cost me? How much will shipping cost me? How much could I possibly sell it for? How much is the difference? And that creates a profit, right? And then you have your other expenses too, but we'll just keep it basic for today. The budget model or money model is how much do I spend? How much do I take? And what's the difference in between? So if you're just writing notes, here's how you start a business. And the business that you start today may or may not be the business that you're running in 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. I don't care about that. I would push you to go do something that creates dollars or creates value so you can make dollars later. I just want you in the habit of doing things. I want you in the habit of starting things. I can't tell you the number of businesses that I've started that I didn't keep or business ventures that I started that I didn't keep. That, that doesn't matter to me. I want you in the habit of thinking this way. And um, the third one, the lead generation model, here's, here's the one that I'll talk about for a, for a little bit longer. This is where do I find my customers? How do I get in front of people? So if I'm going to create t-shirts and I'm going to sell screen printed or graphic t-shirts, which by the way is a great place to start, um, how am I going to get it in front of people? So how do, I, how do I find my leads? A lead is somebody who might buy the t-shirt from you. So where are my leads? One lead would be everybody that you know. So all of your friends and family. You're sending out a text message to your entire family and uh, maybe maybe you grew up with a big family I did not maybe you do and maybe you could text your cousins and your grandparents and your aunts and uncles and all of that and you could tell them hey I started this t-shirt business uh, which t-shirt do you want to order by the way you never say do you want to order one <laughs> you always say uh, which one do you want think about Girl Scouts Girl Scouts that sell cookies um, like in front of a grocery store. They're so smart because they don't say, do you want to buy some cookies? They say, how many boxes of cookies do you want? And that's a salesmanship. That's a sales skill. So get your scripts and dialogue straight. So how many t-shirts do you want? Or which t-shirts do you want? Not do you want some? All right, so I digress. Let me go back. So the lead generation model is where will I find my customers? Where do my customers live? Um, are they online? Are they uh, real life? I mean, if you, uh, when you go back to school in the fall and you want to sell t-shirts, you could have t-shirts printed up that people love and you wear them. And that's part of your lead generation. Well, where, where'd you get that shirt? And you go, oh, I made it. Do you want one? They're $20, $12, whatever it is, right? You could sell anything. Remember, what you want to do is you want to find a problem, create a solution for it, tell everybody about it. That's a business in a nutshell. So the lead generation model, where are my customers and how do I get in front of them? Uh, what, what offer do I need to make by, you know, the t-shirts are $18. Uh, because maybe they cost you $12. And so the difference is the profit. Um, but then you say, listen, if you buy two of them, I'll give them to you for $15 instead of 18. I'll make you a deal. Um, that's the, that's, that's where you begin to think leads or lead generation. How do I find buyers? How do I find people who want whatever it is that I'm, I'm creating or doing? Um, the fourth is the production model. The production model, um, if you're writing notes would be, how do I fulfill the order? Where do I get them? Like, do I order them from here? Do I order them from there? Uh, do I make them myself? Um, you, could, uh, you could borrow $200 or $300 and you could, you could buy um, an inexpensive home 
uh, printer that prints on, if we're just gonna stick with the idea of making t-shirts, um, you can buy a, a home printer that you can print um, graphics onto a t-shirt and you could buy white t-shirts or black t-shirts or hoodies or long sleeve shirts or whatever uh, from Amazon in bulk, 10 of them at a time, stick them in your home printer and print something cool on it. Maybe it's something cool about your school. Maybe it's something cool about um, a mascot. Maybe it's something cool about something happening in our time right now. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter if you choose to sell t-shirts or not. I just want you to think, what could I do? What am I interested in? But the production model is how do I fulfill the order? The production model is where do I get it? How do I get it? How much does it cost? And where do I send it to? So if I'm gonna have to ship a t-shirt, if you sell a t-shirt on Instagram, then great. Part of my production model is how do I get it to them? Do I drop ship it from somewhere? Do I send it myself? Like you could start, um, so Cafe Press is a website and there's other ones out there. So I'll just use Cafe Press. Cafe Press is a website that you can create your own online store. So here's an example. <laughs> if you have a big family, like if you have lots of aunts and uncles and cousins and like your, your mom or dad, you know, have like lots of brothers and sisters or whatever. If you have a fairly big family, you should start a Cafe Press website uh, about your family and you put the family name or you put like a picture of maybe you had a giant Thanksgiving dinner last year and 50 people were there. Well, maybe you get a picture of that and you go to cafe press and what you can do is you can load that picture on there and you can send the link to your entire family and your family would say, Oh, I'd love to order a coffee cup with our family name on it or a picture of our family uh, retreat or our family reunion. Well, they buy the coffee cup, you get to set the price, Cafe Press actually drop ships the cup to them. You don't print it, you don't send it, you don't touch it. They just order it with their credit card number and then Cafe Press sends you the difference. That's called profit. That is not a terrible way to start your entrepreneurial ideas. By the way, here's the deal. If you create something like that, do you think your parents will buy something? They kind of have to. And so go ahead, go ahead and start it that way, right? And you go, mom, dad, which of these coffee cups do you want to buy? Look, I put a picture of myself on it. They're going to buy it. I put a picture of my brother and sister on it. They're going to buy it. I put a picture of your guys' wedding day. Don't you want to buy this, dad? I mean, get creative on this. Today is not about making a lot of money. If you want to be an entrepreneur, today is about making some money. If you made a dollar, then great. And here's the thing, if you can make a dollar, you can make a thousand dollars. And if you can make a thousand dollars, you can make a million dollars. And if you can make a million dollars, you can make a hundred million dollars. Now, this isn't about money, though money's important. The more money you make in your life, the more amazing things you can do. The more money you make, the more people you can help. The more money you make, the more things you can have an effect on. So is money important? Yeah, money's really important. Is it the reason that you wake up in the morning? Probably not. It's not the reason I wake up in the morning. I love what I do and I have a passion for what I do, but I also love to make money. And I also love that the more money I have, the more people I can help, the more money that I have. So take for example, um, it cost me money to have all this camera equipment to be able to talk to you today. It cost me money to pay Lacey, who's my assistant, who's here in the office to make sure that everything works. That costs money. And so the more money I make, the more of that that I can do, then I can help you. You're not paying me. I don't charge you anything. I want you to, I want you to be a part of these series because you get value from it and that makes me feel good inside. So that's my payoff. But Lacey's not gonna work for free. This camera won't come here for free. Uh, a fast internet connection isn't free. To get my point to all of this, there's a cost associated with everything. So I digress. I want you to do something that makes a dollar. I want you to do something that makes $2 because if you can, you can be unlimited. This is just about this is just about working to learn. Later in life, you can work to earn. And what you might find is you might start something today that you make a ton of money on. You might start something today that you just hit it just right and it helps a whole lot of people. By the way, the more people it can help, the more money you can make. And the more money you can make, the more people you can help. Most people that I know who make a lot of money are amazing, good people. And they help lots of people and they give lots of money away. And so I'd love for you to do the same thing. So, all right, uh, in, in synopsis, we're putting everything together. You have the organizational model. Who's gonna do what? 
Who do I need to help me with this? Um, if you're 14 years old, you probably need your mom or dad or whoever's helping you to help set up the Cafe Press website. Like you might need to put a credit card number in there or a bank routing number for where to send the money. Um, so you need some help. So that would be the organizational model. Now, the way that I would do it is I would keep it very simple. I would just get some, some note cards and I would write organizational model. I would write budget model. I would write lead generation model. Just keep it simple. This does not need to be a giant business plan. However, when you write them out, it becomes a business plan. So organization model, who's going to do what, who's in charge of what, whose job is what, um, a budget model, where's our money going to come from, where's our money going to go, how much does something cost, is there a way to make a profit on it? Those are the questions you would ask. And I know I'm moving pretty fast, but you can rewatch the webinar if you missed any of that. Um, the lead generation model, where are my customers? How do I get this in front of somebody? Have fun with this. You're a creative person, go create something. Just remember that the world is employed by entrepreneurs and I want you to go be an entrepreneur. I want you to go build something amazing. And being an entrepreneur also doesn't mean that you um, only own the company. You might create something inside of the company that you work in. That's okay too. We talked about that I think on, on maybe week one or week two. I called it an intrapreneur um, and an entrepreneur. They're, they're, they're very similar. Um, the production model is how do I fulfill the order? Like, where do I go? How do I do it? Um, what's going to happen? Like, how do I make something that I sell? Whether I make it and then sell it or I sell it and then make it, both are fine. But you have to have the production model. How will it all work? Um, so for this week, um, one of the things I would push you to do is five things you're grateful for every day. Five things you're grateful for every day. Five things you're grateful for every day. Um, the second thing would be this. Um, figure out a business that you would love to start Figure out something that you would love to be a part of, that you would love to create. Keep it simple. Um, ask your mom or dad or someone that you know to help you with it. If you'd like help from me, I'm happy to look at your budget model. I'm happy to look at the lead generation model. Um, send me an email or have your parents help you with it. Cody Gibson at kw.com. Cody Gibson at kw.com. Um, send me a message and say, hey, I'm thinking that I want to start a t-shirt business. Here's my ideas. Here's what I'd like to do. If you'll take the time to send it to me, I'll take the time to read it. And I'll take the time to give you my input on it. Uh, somebody in here needs to um, start a, a landscaping business. And you might live somewhere that you could mow the lawns around, around your uh, neighborhood. Great. Perfect. That's a great place to start. I did that when I was a kid. I bought a weed whacker and I went around and I like people, I, I lived in bad neighborhoods, like not very good places. And so uh, I remember I, I had this weed whacker and I went to the neighbor's house and it was all overgrown with weeds and like stuff in the backyard. And I just said, hey, uh, I got a weed whacker. Uh, would you like me to take care of this? And they said, yeah. And they paid me 20 bucks. And I made $20 in 30 minutes of standing in the backyard doing this with a weed whacker. You know what? 20 bucks in 30 minutes was really, really good money when I was 12 years old. And you could do the exact same thing. You could do the exact same thing. Some of the best entrepreneurs I know started when they were your age, mowing the lawn down the street. And before they knew it, they had two lawns to know, and then three lawn to, to mow, then three lawns, and then four. Another great entrepreneur I know, their business started shoveling the neighbor's driveway. Now, it's, it's May, you're probably not shoveling any driveways. But if you live somewhere that it snows, guess what's gonna happen this winter? You're going to have to go back to shoveling driveways or snow blowing driveways. A friend of mine, uh, when I was a kid, I didn't do this, but he did it. He shoveled driveways. I lived in Alaska. He shoveled driveways until he made enough money to buy a snow blower. He bought a really nice snow blower. Then he was able to do more driveways faster. Then what that grew to when he was 16, because he was like 12 when he started, when he was 16, he had enough money. I need you to hear me on this. He bought a brand new truck. How many 16 year olds do you know go out and buy their own brand new truck? And he put a snow plow on the front of it. How awesome is that? He got to choose what he, what he drove because he earned the money and then he bought a truck and then the business grew and now he has three or four trucks and he has people that he pays. So just keep in mind that where you start isn't where you finish. You might start itty bitty, you might smart, start really, really small. But before you know it, you might have a great big business. And if you won't take the first step, you'll never take a thousand steps. So everything begins small, which is why I keep saying, even if you make a dollar, even if you do just one thing, I just want you to explore. I want you to have fun with it. I want you to grow. I want you to learn. 
And you know, the best way to grow and learn is try something. What's the worst thing that happens? It doesn't work. Well, if it doesn't work, you learned something. You learned, okay, don't do it like that. People look at my businesses today and they think that everything goes well. It doesn't. We mess things up all the time. Um, we change things all the time. We're constantly saying, that didn't work, let's do it this way. That didn't work the way we thought, let's do it that way. Remember, remember one of the comments that I made was that failure isn't final. It's not, fa it's not fatal. Excuse me. Failure isn't fatal. Failure won't kill you. Failure won't even hurt you. Success is also not final. You do something that works, well, today's Friday. You got to do something tomorrow that works too. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day. You can't live forever on one thing that you did well. If you got an A on a test one day, well, guess what? You got another test coming. And so success in school is not final. If you got really good grades this year and you're a 10th grader, guess what? If you have terrible grades next year as an 11th grader, you're going to repeat 11th grade again because success isn't final. You can't just do one thing well and then say, cool, remember that good grade that I got two years ago? I'm good. No, nah, it doesn't work that way. So success isn't final. Failure isn't fatal. So go try something. Go mess something up. Go watch something and go, oh, all right. Go watch something not work. You're going to learn so much from it. All right, so uh, it's 1243. I wanted to go about 40 minutes this week. We went a few minutes long. Uh, I hope that you got value from today. I hope you learned a few things. Uh, be grateful. Like you get to be alive during the most amazing time. You're here for a reason. You're not here accidentally. You're here for a reason. You're wired a certain way. You live a certain place. You have a certain beginnings. You have a certain family. And those things are all, I believe, on purpose. You're not a mistake. You're absolutely here for a reason. Your job is to figure out what that is. And the easiest way to do it is to start trying different things. Just see what happens. The world is waiting for you to do something incredible. So let's go do something incredible. I hope you got value from today. If you want to re-listen to it, to go back through those four models, please feel free to do it. Uh, we're going to send out uh, emails to this group with when the next uh, team webinar is going to happen. I can't do next Friday at noon. I've been able to do five in a, in a row. I just can't do one next Friday at noon. So we'll do the best we can. Uh, we'll put together another one. We will keep doing them. Um, we'll communicate it back with you. Have an amazing day. I appreciate you. Go do something awesome.